Hi, I'm Patrick, and this is the Mach-E Vlog. Today, we're gonna to show you another level two charger. This time it's from Emporia, and I'm really excited to show you all the features of this one. So let's go. So of course, as with many chargers, this has a lot of the, the, the same common features. It's a up to 48 amp charger if you have it hardwired. Today we're gonna use a NEMA 1450 plug, so it's good for up to 40 amps, but it can you can scale it down if you don't have that much power going to your garage or wherever you're powering this. It can scale down to 15 amps. It is also rated so that it can go down to temperatures of like negative 22 degrees on up to 122 degrees, which that should cover most people. But if you are gonna mount it outside, you probably wanna put it like under an awning or something like that to keep the sunlight from being on it. Because even if it's like 100 degrees outside with the sun and all, that can get the temperature up. It is waterproof. So, it, you know, you can't like submerge it or anything, but it should withstand the rain and snow and other elements. So. Just a lot of great features with this. It is also a smart charger, so wherever you install it, you need to have Wi-Fi, and then the app is where you have a lot of great features with this. A couple of reasons that we're really excited to share this one with you is, one, Emporia is a local company to us. We're here in Denver, Colorado. They're located in Littleton, Colorado. We actually went and took a tour of their facility, met with their CEO, Sean McLaughlin. Besides the EV charger, they have some really cool home energy management systems and home monitoring, uh, home energy monitoring systems. So we took a look at some of that stuff and what this enables this charger to do is like if you have a home solar system, you can monitor what your uh, energy output is from the solar system and then balance your charging to match that. So for example, if you are charging during the day but your air conditioner is kicking on, you can tell it to pause charging while your AC is on, when the AC is back off, then you start charging again. So some really cool features that I love, and we are gonna probably do a deeper dive into some of that stuff, but in this video, we'll focus just on the home, uh, the level two charger. Of course, we have to get this installed. We're gonna show you here, a, let me scoot this out of the way. So there's the outlet that we're going to install it on. We're gonna mount it above that. This outlet is actually relatively high. I would recommend doing a, an outlet a little bit lower than that because the charger is going to be up above that, a little bit higher than what I would want. But overall, this is a great installation. Here's the circuit breaker right ne next to it. And that's a NEMA 1450 plug. There's a lot of different options when you're getting your home charging set up. But what I recommend is to ask for a 50 amp circuit with a NEMA 1450 plug. This is your standard that you'll see in like a lot of RV parks. And this is what most home chargers level two will uh, have at least the option of. So that's a great option for home. And the other thing that I would recommend is some uh, electricians will say that you, you can get away with eight gauge wire. I would go with six gauge. And the reason for that is, is because you're gonna be charging for so long, it builds up quite a bit of heat. The six gauge wire can handle that a lot easier. So that's my tip for that. Inside the case, we of course just have the, the charger. I won't get everything out right now, but we have a charger, we have a mounting bracket, and we have a holster. The cord is about 24 feet, so it has some heft to it. And that's why we need to make sure it's securely mounted to the wall. So we're gonna go through the installation. We'll get you a little bit of that set up, but let's get started on that. Okay, so I lied. We're not actually going to install this today. We just moved, this isn't our house, we're at a friend's house and we don't wanna put a bunch of holes in their wall. And this bracket actually requires several holes that are pretty deep. We need to test to make sure that there's no wiring back here before we do that. I didn't bring my tester. So I don't wanna drill into this, but it, it's actually very easy to install this. There has a, there's a bracket that is, uh, that attaches to the main charger and you literally just you know, mark your spots, drill it, put those in, and then that attaches to it. There's a couple of screws that you can see here and on the sides that you would then permanently mount the charger in. And there's also a holster that attaches here for the handle of the charging unit. But like I said, this is our, our friend's house. We don't want to put a bunch of holes in just to do this demo and we're being kind and we don't want to drill into any wiring like this. And if you have any doubts, always 
consult with a professional. Now, uh, just reminded by our friend as well of like, why are we preferring to plug in versus hardwiring this? It's still up to you. You can get a little bit more power if you hardwire on a uh, directly into the panel. That I would recommend getting an electrician to do first of all. But the other reason to do this is that if we have this charger plugged in and we are plugging in the car and the car is not charging, it could be the car or it could be the charger. And if it's plugged in, I can unplug this charger, take our Ford charger that came with the Mach-E, plug that in and then see like if all of a sudden it's working, then I know there's something wrong with the charger. If that still doesn't work, then it's either the car or maybe the circuit panel, something in there. So I like it because it gives you some flexibility of that you can test out to see where the problem is at without having to like have an electrician come and unwire it for you. So this is the way I, you know, I like doing it at our house when we get the new one set up. And what we're gonna do here, instead of mounting it, like I said, we're just gonna plug it in and go through the setup process and just pretend it's on the wall. And our Maki is right behind us. So we're gonna uh, pause for a second while I get everything ready and make sure we're okay to do that and get the app ready and then we'll proceed. Okay, so I have the Emporia app up. And by the way, I have a couple of um, test outlets that I'm using right now that I, as I mentioned, is part of the home energy monitoring system that they have. We won't go into that, but we're gonna go down here where it says EV chargers. We're gonna add a device. We're gonna go directly to setup. I'll let you go through the installation guide if you want. We're going to find, connect to, and determine relative position of nearby devices, which means I think I need to plug this in first. So we're going to say allow. There we go. It's already detected it. Scanning available networks. Okay, it's connecting, connected already. Now it's connecting to the Emporia cloud. So then that way data from this can be uh, monitored in the, the cloud with the app and all the good stuff. Meaning I can connect to the charger even when we are away from home. And it says it can take a minute. Name of EV charger. We're just going to keep this simple and call it Emporia. Primary vehicle, we'll say, if you knew us, you know our Mach-E, we call it Blucifer Tucifer because it's actually our second Mach-E. We're on mountain time, nest under standalone. And then here it's like, what uh, circuit breaker do we have it on? And this is where I was talking about. You can limit your power down to 15 amps, 12 amps max charge. We are on a 50 amp circuit, which means we can do, do up to a 40 amp max charge. So I'm gonna select that. And on these plugged in outlets, like even if you're on a 60 amp circuit, that's a NEMA 1450 plug. So according to the, the standards, the max you should do on that is a 40 amp charge. Even if you're on a 60 amp circuit, which could technically support higher, the plug is only rated for 40 amps max sustained charge. So we're gonna hit save. And now it's going to check and see if it uh, needs to update the firmware. It said it was gonna take about three minutes and it did take three minutes. It says it's all done and it says it's ready to charge. So should we give it a try? It lets go. There's the Emporia charger. We're gonna leave the screen recorder going. See, and this is a 24 foot cable. As I think I mentioned earlier, the Maki -E is behind us, but the charge door of course is on the opposite side. So we're going to stretch this out and go charge. Here we go. It's detecting it. Hopefully it's doing something. And I hear the charger clicking on. And there we go. <laughs> we can see it's outputting 
3 watts, 49 watts, 377 watts. You can also hear the doors on the Mach-E testing to make sure that it has the vents if it needs it. Um, 1,969 watts. It's going up. So it's, it's still going up. I want to go over here. We'll look at the charger. It's basically a green light. The charging light is flashing blue. The Wi-Fi light is blue. And of course, the problem light is off. So that's a great thing to have. Now I'm in the Ford Pass setup. I have the target charge level to 100%. This is because this is not a save lo location. It's only been on the charger for one minute. Doesn't give us as much information. And this is why I do like having a smart charger because I can go back over to the smart charger and I can see this, this graph is awesome. It's basically right at 9,000 watts, uh, nine kilowatts. Uh, going into the car, nice and steady, nice even graph. Uh, it's actually a, a warm day, but the car is not like going crazy with the fans on right now. So that's basically it. And within the app here, I can do some really cool stuff as far as like managing when I want this to charge, whether or not uh, I want it to limit the charge during peak charging hours. I can do a lot of this stuff with the Mach-E, but it's nice having an app here that can also uh, monitor this. It will also keep track of how much energy I'm using and know what my utility rate is. So it can tell me it, the cost that the charge uh, amounted to for the Mach-E. And of course, this charger works with pretty much any EV that's out there. Even if a, you have a Tesla, you can get the Tesla adapter. Um, Tesla's actually come with that. So you can plug in the adapter to the end of the, the plug here and plug into your Tesla if you have that. But it's just basically a universal, really nice charging unit. I like the fact that it uh, has a nice 24-foot cable. Some of them are down to like 15 feet, which is a bit short. This gives you a lot of flexibility. It's rated for indoor or outdoor use, which is another benefit. And the integration with the in home energy monitoring and management is an excellent feature. And if you have solar, this works with if you have the energy or the uh, Emporia View energy management, it works with any solar system as well so that it can do some of that management and control when your charger is charging to avoid exceeding your capacity of your uh, solar uh, system that you have in, installed. So I think it's an excellent choice. I'm really happy with it. And look for a future video. We're gonna cover some of the other stuff that Emporia is doing. We're gonna take more visits out to Emporia, I hope, and see all the cool stuff that they're doing. Um, I can hear the Mach-E behind us. The pumps now are, are working to cool down the battery a little bit, I think. So everything is looking excellent. Like this charger a lot. We are not gonna mount this here because we're gonna take it home and get it installed at our house when we can get an electrician scheduled to come by. So just with our quick overview, I really like this charger. The charging cables seem really solid. I like the length of it. I like the fact that it's, you know, can be monitored with some of the other energy management stuff from Emporia. If you want us to go out there and talk to them, ask them any questions, if you have any questions about any of their products, please drop a comment below. If you have a solar system, is this something that interests you, being able to control your charger based on what your solar system is doing, like maybe not charge on cloudy days or, or stuff like that? Let us know. If you have any feedback for Emporia, let us know as well. Like I said, they're local. Okay, we're not gonna do a full charge. We don't want to use all of our friends' energy, but we're going to go ahead and hit stop charging. And it's sort of thinking about things. And then there we go. It's ready to stop. Oop, I didn't take out this little piece of rubber. To It's a little piece of rubber. Now I can unplug and we're all done. So thanks for watching this video. Let us know what you think about this charger. If you have any questions for us, drop them in the comments below. We'll try to get those answered as quickly as possible. And just remember, Whatever you drive or however you charge it, enjoy the ride.